Okay, so what we have here is a very vintage jet turbine engine. This is a Jet Cat P120. This engine weighs about three and a half pounds and it's capable of producing 27 pounds of thrust. It is a true jet turbine, spins up to 120,000 RPM when everything is working correctly. And I found this on Craigslist. And uh, this is a very fun way to annoy your neighbors because this thing is loud. Over 120 dB uh, at full chooch. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun because it sounds exactly like a real jet engine because it is just smaller and meant for RC airplanes. So what do we get? Um, first of all, I'll tell you a story about it. I found it on Craigslist. I bought it from a guy who I would consider an RC expert. This guy had more RC helicopters than I can imagine. It was in the 20s, at least 20, maybe even more. And these are full-sized nitro-powered helicopters. So I would consider him an expert when it comes to nitro-powered RC aircraft. But he was not able to get this thing to start. And the main problem was he was not using propane or propane accessories. So I got a deal. I got it for um, 620 bucks. He, and he didn't know that it worked tonight and I took the gamble because this thing is awesome. I have always loved these RC jets and I took the chance and I'm glad I did. So let's review what everything that came with it. So I, I bought everything he had and everything that I needed to get it going. He also threw in some extra fuel for me. So first unit, this is the uh, JetCat P120, like I said. It was, um, it spun over, the bearings felt fine. It didn't have this uh, guard on it at the time, but uh, it seemed to be okay. And um, this box right here, this is just a communication box to the ECU. This is the way, the only way to be able to change the settings uh, of the ECU. And it helps you uh, when it comes to programming your radio which is not that hard. So fuel tank, just standard RC fuel tank, nothing special here. Dual vents, um, mainly to, uh, this thing likes to drink gas. This is one liter of fuel and at full, full throttle, it'll burn through this in around a minute and a half. At idle, it takes, uh, I don't know, it idles at 30,000 RPM. So maybe four minutes of fuel at idle with this, but who wants to run at idle? It's no fun. Fuel pump. This is a uh, programmable fuel pump. Scroll by the ECU. It changes the speed depending on the throttle position. That's how you're able to control the throttle speed or the speed of the engine is through the uh, through this. So think of this as a uh, just a fuel pump pumping in more throttle, more fuel, more it goes, and it goes in through a solenoid which will open and close the valve at a certain interval. Also controlled by the ECM, the controller module you have one solenoid for your propane and one solenoid for your jet fuel jet fuel is basically kerosene with a little oil mixed in and it's really clean um, basically it's it's called jet a1 if you buy it from an airport but you can it's kerosene so you can just go to any you know lowe's or home depot and pick some up but you need to mix it with oil pre-mix just think of this like a two-stroke engine so we have the fuel pump, we have the controller, we have the ECM. I had to put in my own receiver. This is just an on-road indoor car receiver, which is fine for the test board, but for future plans, I'm gonna have to change that. This is the in-out board, and on the in-out board, there's three little lights that tell you the status of the engine. And the engine's actually really easy to start and stop. You can start it with the radio. The startup process is all automated. You just need to make sure that the uh, propane is, is on, and the fuel is uh, connected and it'll just do it everything itself. It's fully automated. It, you just tell it to turn on, it'll go through the cycle. And when it gets to idle, it'll let you know through the uh, in out board with the lights. And then you can uh, throttle it using the radio. So uh, the other problem I had was the temperature sensor. So he couldn't get it started because he was just trying to start on kerosene and it did not have the kerosene retrofit. Which would be, which would be right here. So um, the kerosene retrofit is really tall, and there's a fuel line going to it. The way I knew that this was a propane style start, first of all, the, uh, the little control box here told me propane. It had both or two fuel inlets. This one's for gas or propane. This one's for 
Jet A. That's the other reason why I was able to uh, configure it correctly. The uh, solenoids were also kind of looped together, so I, I just rerouted the fuel lines there. But when I tried to start it, I had an error message. It took me a while to figure out, but it wasn't reading the temperature. So uh, you can still buy parts for this. For this, and I found a place to buy parts out of Florida. Replaced it. So what what was wrong with it? It was it became desoldered. This line right here is the temperature sensor, and it is the most fragile soldering I've ever seen. The wires are so thin; it's like a redheaded stepchild's thinness of you know of of hair. It's it's very small, and it was broken, and I couldn't resolder it. And this is a bimetal wire, and it's so small I I don't know how to do it. So I. Ordered a replacement, it's 35 bucks. I ordered two just in case because if you just strum this like a guitar, you're gonna break those solder joints and it's it's gonna malfunction again. So this is probably the most fragile part of the whole jet, is this. Otherwise, it's three parts. You have your inlet turbine, which we would call that compressor, and then you have your turbine in the back, and one shaft with two bearings, and that's it, and, and just fuel lines that don't move that are internal that go into the combustion chamber, which is in the center of the, uh, of the jet. So I was able to get it started, but I could not get full throttle. Full throttle happens about 120,000 RPM. I was having problems with the lines popping off. These nipples are so close together that, that, uh, zip ties just were not, there's not enough room to have two zip ties there. Because the the nipples are short, they're close together. It's just it's no room, so I had to wire them. But if you try to wire this blue line, which is great for you know like regular nitro engines, uh, it's, it's too soft for this application, and they just pop off. Or the wire would actually cut into the silicone and just just you know cut into it and, and separate it, and it wouldn't work. So I had to find the proper fuel line, which is this stuff here. Um, you'll see on the video the uh, brand name of it, but I was able to wire them safety wire them to the nipples and it It works just fine. There's plenty of room for that in there. It's, it's a little tedious to do But once they're wired in they're not moving So once I was able to do that it cured my fuel lines popping off and spraying jet AI everywhere And I was able to get full throttle. So we have a fully functioning Jet turbine engine with 27 pounds of thrust for $620, and I'm stoked. Now, what do I do with it? I don't want to put it in an airplane. Um, it'd be cool, but it's been done. I have another project in mind, and I'll, I'll get to that uh, in another video. But uh, it has to do with a beer company and uh, my disagreement with them. So anyway, that's it. I, I'm making this video because I could not find any videos describing how the propane system is for this, you know, these vintage style jet RCs. Everything has moved to just kerosene. They've eliminated the propane, which is fine. Uh, but for the guys who have this old stuff and don't know how to work it, this is it. So this is how you route it. You have a solenoid for each. They're separate. Just think of it as two separate fuel, fuel systems and, uh, you're good to go as long as you have a working thermometer or temp sensor and everything else is functioning this thing functions good as new i'm very happy with it anyway you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them down in the comments thank you